I know next year we do have some top quarterbacks coming out draft, and uh, that's nice, but I don't think they'll be quarterback ones automatically. I doubt it. So maybe, uh, you know, by the time he's not a quarterback one, he's probably retired in my mind. So I think he's still a quarterback one, but like, like I said, he's no longer that, oh, can't wait to get him. I don't see that changing anymore. Like I said, this year's ADP is in between that 9 and 12 range. I can see it going down to closer to 12 next year, but I think he still is a quarterback one, even in a single quarterback league. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the dynamic of Rodgers in a single quarterback league, the beat goes on, and he probably will end up creating – another wide receiver that ends up being a wide receiver two or one. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about the dynamic of their running back. And Aaron Jones enters another season, George, where he's a bona fide first round slash second round pick in fantasy football. There are some people who like him more than others. Of course, there have been some injury issues as well to go along with it. And I also understand that Rodgers has made comments about throwing the ball more to the running backs. And again, this is something, George, where I hear somebody talk and I'm like, I don't know if I completely believe that. This could be just more motivation for his guys on the outside. Uh, But very clearly, they have two running backs that can catch the ball. Let's start off with where you are on Jones going into 2022. Love Aaron Jones. Love Aaron Jones. But A.J. Dillon's going to eat into that time considerably. where It's going to be close to a 50-50 split. And Dillon might be the goal line guy because he's the bigger uh, bigger back. You know, uh, Either if one if either one of these guys was just a solo guy and they had a normal uh, backup, you know, uh, someone going to play, you know, 25, 30% of the time, uh, they're easy top 10 running backs. Easy for me, top 10 running backs. But because they're both on the same team, they're both going to, in my mind, pre- come pretty close to 50-50. Yeah, I would rather have Jones because I think he's going to play a little bit more and be more the, uh, the run guy and he's going to catch passes. Once again, I always assume you're playing in a PPR league. If you're playing in a standard league, then I might change my mind a little bit. But most things are PPR. So I assume that. And Jones is going to catch a lot of balls here. What you said is true. All right, yeah, they said they're going to throw the ball more uh, to A.J. Dillon. Okay, that might be true. There's a lot of things they say in preseason. They say it now. You know, guys are in the uh, best shape of their careers. Everyone's in the best shape in preseason. They're going to do this more, this, that, and the other thing. They say that now, but once the, you know, the games start counting, you know, they, ch- they go back to their old ways here. So I no longer care about uh, what really all that much they say here. Love Jones. I mean, ideally – Top running back, too. And I understand that's a perfect world here, but there are running backs you could take ahead of him. I have him in the same category as Fournette. Uh, Javante Williams, sort of the same thing with uh, Melvin Gordon there. James Conn, we'll see if you get all those touchdowns again. Jones is in that category with me. Yeah, okay, so let's move over real quick to A.J. Dillon, who, uh, strangely, the Packers drafted, and they got questioned about that. But, George, let's be honest, this guy looks just as good as Aaron Jones. And if Green Bay decided to dial it back a little bit on the passing – then A.J. Dillon could certainly be a star running the ball. But, boy, this is Aaron Rodgers' team still at this point. He decided to come back. Did he decide to come back to hand the ball off, you know, 40 times a game, 20 to Jones and 20 to Dillon? I don't think so. How do they work this out? Well, the problem when they drafted A.J. Dillon wasn't so much that they drafted him. Uh, you probably should have drafted a wide receiver. It would have really been nice here. But – then you re-signed Aaron Jones. I think that's what threw everybody off. Jones had one year left on his contract. Okay, you prepared for Jones leaving. Made perfect sense. You know, but then you re-signed him. Why? You know, and then you took the, uh, of course, the quarterback in round one as well. So you gave Rodgers really no weapons uh, for a couple right. of years. So that was the issue there. I love A.J. Dillon. Like I said, I think this guy on a normal team kills it. Absolutely kills it here. But here his value is less than a little bit. I think I asked you the other day in my home league here. I have a choice here. I could keep A.J. Dillon in round seven or Tony Pollard in round nine. And the thing is, in that league, if I keep my A.J. Dillon, I don't, I don't have a pick for five straight picks because of keepers and trades I made. So that's my decision here. Uh, Pollard, I find interesting because I think what, again, he's going to eat into the carries of, uh, of Ezekiel Elliott, and I get, get to keep him at two rounds later. But Dillon's going to have a lot of touchdowns this year. It wouldn't surprise me if he approaches double digits. Yep, definitely so. But the key question for the Packers, everybody watching knows those players, It's the wide receivers. That's the clear question for the Packers. So coming up next, I'm going to put George on the spot here and make him tell you who you should be drafting on the Packers this year at wide receiver. Stay on the grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines 
breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. Are we sure? One last time, piece of you know, kind of housekeeping here. Are we sure that Shohei Otani? is out of this MVP race based on the season and the way it's going. And the fact of the matter is yesterday would be a needle moving game for Shohei Otani and it moved no needles. That leads you to believe that this race is over. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell coast to coast. Joe Burrow is back at camp playing for the Bengals the last couple of days. Scotty, yesterday spoke to the media they asked him you worried about the new contract new new money coming in change the name of the stadium they're loading up to pay joey burrow he owns that city he owns that state they are going to have to give it literally he's going to be the governor the sports grid network the morning after Uh, i'll bet more on preseason football and, and, and literally than i'll bet on uh you know, the regular season as far as sides go. So following market, market capping, uh, literally, uh, l- literally following the media, following your socials. Um, you know, there's so many different things to look at here. If you're not beating things like preseason football, you probably should get a different hobby. It's that simple. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. They went out and they signed DJ Shark, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, to a uh, contract. And Shark was an afterthought in Jacksonville. And maybe it's predominantly because of the offense that they were running last year under Urban Meyer. But Shark basically was in and out of injuries. He had some hand issues. And he only caught 154 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. And welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with George Kurtz. We're diving into the Green Bay Packers in our fantasy football preview today here on the show. And George, I'm very curious your thoughts on the remainder of these skill position players on the Packers. So let's take a look at our average draft position as far as the Packers are concerned. Of course, we have Aaron Rodgers who's checking in approximately around the sixth, seventh round as we've discussed. Also Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are the key running backs, no doubt. But George, the wide receivers is where things really get interesting for Green Bay. Uh, There have been some comments, of course, from Aaron Rodgers about how he's confident in some of these uh, wide receivers. Then we heard some opposite comments where those guys need to get it going. So, uh, you know, I'm kind of up in the air here with some of these players. But what I know is at the end of the season, if Aaron Rodgers throws between 30 and 35 touchdowns, there's a wide receiver in fantasy football on this team that's going too low. And that person's Alan Lazard, right? He's probably the one where you said, if he's throwing 30 to 35 or anything above that, uh, someone had a breakout year here. Uh, he, we know he likes Lazard, right? He said it for several years now. He likes Lazard, so it would have to be that guy. The problem is this. Lazard is not a number one NFL wide receiver. At least anybody's anywhere near the definition of an NFL number one wide receiver, which means he's going to have a hard time against the number one cornerback. That's what he's going to be up against a lot. You know, defensive pass call defense is going to be geared really to stop him. What do they feel he's uh, the threat he is? So he's going to see that extra attention uh, paid, paid to him. Now, don't get me wrong. Defense is going to really pay attention to stopping Dylan, stopping Aaron Jones in the running game, which is really weird to say, right? They want to force Aaron Rodgers to throw. 
weird. But I think that's what they're going to do, going to go do here because they're not afraid of Lazard, Watkins, Cobb, Watson, Amari Rogers, uh, Romeo the Dubs, Dows, however you pronounce his last name. Uh, they're not afraid of this. They're just not. Someone's going to have to step up. If you're asking me who I think that person could be, I think, once again, according to your parameters, and he gets 30-plus touchdowns, it is Lazard. After that, you want to throw some mud against the wall and take Christian Watson? You know, you want to go take Watkins? Good luck. I've been down that road many times before. You know, fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me two, three, ten times, shame on me. I ain't going there. You know, but I don't mind any of those guys. But, Craig, I think also, outside of Lazard, Watkins, Cobb, Watson, these are going to be the first guys you release once those bye weeks hit and you need to, you know, fill a bye week replacement. Uh, I got Watkins. He's not doing anything. Fine. Let's get rid of him to get that, you know, four-string wide receiver on another team when he's playing that week. Yeah. No, and I, and I think that's the key. And, and George is basically planting the flag on Lazard this season. And last year he did have eight touchdowns. So this was not a nothing. But he's wide receiver 44 right now, which tells you that if George is correct – He's going to be wide receiver 24 at the end of the season. It just remains to be seen if that is the case. Now the unknowns. One of them, of course, is Christian Watson in his first big, uh, in his first season right now in the NFL. Uh, he's being drafted approximately within the top 200, but it looks to me, George, like he's more or less a 14th or 15th rounder. So what we would call is a dart throw here, just making the you know the guess that Watson becomes the number two to Lazard's number one. A uh, very good player in college for sure. Uh, is 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 there a draft where you've picked Watson at all in the offseason? I don't think a uh, a year long. And uh, best ball, yes. I do have some Watson uh, in best ball. Uh, because, once again, best ball, it's best receiver. Right, let's see what happens here. But not in a year long. You mentioned, I call it mud against the wall. You said dartboard. Same thing. You know, maybe he breaks out. First year wide receiver, though, we know uh, Iron Rodgers has been a little upset in camp. And you said earlier, he said some nice things, but he's been he's been frustrated as well. He has got to pick it up. They got to learn, you know, that sort of thing here. Maybe they will. And I can say Watson could get better as the season goes along here. And like I said, I don't mind. I don't mind you taking anybody in the 14th, 15th, 16th round. Why not? Want well, take take your thought with those? Maybe you hit the bullseye. Odds are you don't, but maybe you do. So I don't mind Craig, but I'm not betting on it. Yeah, and then the final player who's made some good strides, I think, in training camp. And early in the preseason is Romeo Dobbs, who, again, another player that's going to have a chance to succeed. And if Watson is going at the end of drafts, I mean, let's be honest, Dobbs is not just not being drafted, essentially. I mean, barely within the top 200. He's wide receiver 67 right now in the NFFC. So it's basically, uh, you know, Watson in one hand and Dobbs in the other and just taking a guess as to whether or not they can be the guy. Uh, you know, but George, this does remind me. I have to say a little bit about the past teams on the Packers. Remember when we wanted to make Allison a guy, we wanted to make Valdez Scantling a guy, and we just were just kind of, you know, guessing as to who the second receiver would be in Green Bay. I mean, do you want to try and take a guess here again or just stick with Lazard? You know, it's funny. I would equate this to uh, to hockey, where in, in fantasy hockey, we always wanted the person who played on the line with Sidney Crosby. Right, because Crosby's great. He'll make that person great. Right. Right. Or uh, or the Ovechkin or McDavid because they're playing with a great player. They're going to be wide open. No one's going to cover them. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. All right. It's the same thing here. All right. Rodgers will make the second wide receiver great because he has to throw to somebody. And that's true. But the problem is we don't know who that's going to be. All right. So maybe it's Watson. All right. Maybe it's Dobbs. Uh, maybe Watkins wakes up. I don't, maybe it's Randall Cobb, who's really a safety blanket, more of a slot guy anyway. All right. So maybe you get Cobb. But I just don't think any of these guys are going to be somebody you're going to want on your roster from week one to 17. I can see them all, each one of them having a game here and there, right? Oh, wow, breakout game. Then they'll get claimed. Everybody, everybody will go bananas to the waiver wire. You're going to blow half your budget on Wednesday night trying to get this guy. And then right. you realize, oh, good, he was good for a week, maybe two. And then you had to move on anyway. It's going to be very frustrating, which is something we haven't seen in Green Bay in a long time as far as that wide receiver. I can't believe with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback that your number one is Lazard. Lazard, I think, is a nice number two. Not even a great number two. I think he's a nice number two. But to not, to not have a pure number one with Aaron Rodgers, to me, this seems very wasteful of uh, the end of Rodgers' career. Yeah, and, and it leads me to believe, as we've talked about previously, that maybe a move is made at some point over the next few weeks. We're just going to have to wait and see. There's one other name I want to talk about that's basically not being drafted, too. Uh, but let's go over to tight end. And again, this is a possibility for some receptions and some yards. But, but truthfully, uh, you know, George, regardless through the years, we've always wanted to make a Packers tight end 
more than they should have. Now, Brett Favre loved throwing to the tight ends, okay? I mean, we could go through Keith Jackson, and we can go through Mark Chamorro and some of the other guys they had. Rodgers has, you know, had a few years here and there with some decent tight ends. I mean, Bubba Franks comes to mind, and I think the guy was named Jermichael Michael Finley. Remember him? We all wanted to make him a thing, too. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, no matter who the name is in Green Bay, they're going to get more attention uh, probably from from others than me. I'm probably not going to take their tight end. Oh, I would hope not, really, unless you're playing a league that starts two tight ends. And I know those leagues are out there. Uh, Tanya should not be on your list here. Uh, he had the uh, a big fantasy year in 2020. It wasn't a great NFL year. Caught 52 balls for 586 yards. Solid year, but he had 11 touchdowns. All right, so fantasy owners are going bananas because of the touchdown. He was the red zone guy. Last year, he fell off dramatically here. Only played eight games, granted, but it was 18 204. Even if you, you know, walk those numbers out, it's 36 408 and four. That's nothing. There are a lot better tight ends here. I know it's the Aaron Rodgers thing again, but Tanya should be on your waiver wire. You can go claim him during the year. I mean, there are lots of guys like he's nowhere near a top 12 tight end. You can put uh, Tanya in there with Austin Hooper, maybe Hayden Hurst, Gerald Everett, Logan Thomas, if he gets healthy there from the ACL. Uh, you know, Moelle Cox will be in the same category here. Maybe David Dejoku, Higby. Listen, these are all the same. And they'll all be out there in your waiver wire. These are not tight end ones. So, you can, you know, you can grab any one of these guys uh, off the wire. If you're – whatever your starting tight end, you've got Cole Komet, and he's not doing anything at the end of your draft. Maybe you got Hunter Henry, right. and he's not – Hunter Henry really is another Tanya. Didn't do much for New England last year outside the touchdowns. But maybe if he's doing the same thing this year but not getting touchdowns, maybe you move on from him and take a shot at Tanyan. I think a lot of people think, well, if he doesn't have the wide receivers to throw to, it'll be Tanyan town. I don't think that's going to work out. Tanyan's not that kind of player. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's uh, the way I see their tight end position. All right, now in terms of names that we have not discussed, Sammy Watkins is definitely one. I understand the nature of where Watkins is at in his career, but George, if we're just assuming that this is the roster going into the season, I mean, there's no doubt that this guy is going to get some opportunity. Staying healthy for 17 games for Watkins, probably impossible. It hasn't happened almost ever, but he is one name. Is there anyone else that we haven't mentioned, or is this simply the one situation where our preview of this position in particular is going to be thrown out the window in a week or two when cuts happen and the Packers say, all right, Come on board. Let, let's grab this guy. Watkins has only played a full season once in his career, and that was his rookie season. All right, he's not playing 17. All right, no way. I mean, no way. So, like I said, that's fool's gold for me. I'm not doing it. He's not the same player anymore anyway at 28 years old. You want the safety blanket and Cobb? I can sort of understand that. He's going to get you a couple of catches each week, you know, 30, 40 yards. Maybe he gets that touchdown. You're really hoping for low double digits. You know, 11, 12 points, <clears throat> your safety blanket, which I sort of understand, especially during bye weeks. You know, at least uh, so I know what I'm going to get in Cobb. So I can understand that. Mm-hmm. After that, I mean, what are you hoping for here? I mean, uh, mm-hmm. you don't like Tanya. You want to go with DeGuara? I mean, how bad are you a tight end? You need to go that low. Now, he didn't break out last year. Mercedes Lewis, no way here. Uh, Amari Rogers, last year's uh, draft pick here. Is he the guy you want to go with? I mean, like I said, you're literally throwing a dartboard. Not only are you throwing it as well, you're just throwing it backwards, trying, hey, let's see what happens here. I don't think any of these guys break out. The only guy I would want here would be Lazard. After that, I can understand Cobb as a, like I said, that safety blanket, 11, 12 points in a week, because you just want to know what you're going to get rather than a gamble on somebody else. Yep, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And that's the dynamic of where the Packers are at in 2022. Could be some significant movement in terms of their wide receivers and tight ends. We're just going to have to wait to see how the season plays out. But as of now, a lot of guessing with them going into the season, which is only a few weeks away. All right, we got to take a quick time out here on the show. If you are interested in any of our fantasy football previews, make sure you go to our YouTube channel or over in sportsgrid.com. We archive all of our previews each day. And on Monday morning, Davis and I will be back here again, previewing another team in 2022. Fantasy reality is coming up next. And then the Sports Grid 60 here on this Friday edition of the show. So don't go away. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes with fantasy or reality here on Sports Grid. Don't go away. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. 
The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. Are we sure? One last time, piece of you know, kind of housekeeping here. Are we sure that Shohei Otani is out of this MVP race? Based on the season and the way it's going, and the fact of the matter is, yesterday would be a needle moving game for Shohei Otani, and it moved no needles. That leads you to believe that this race is over. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. Joe Burrow is back at camp playing for the Bengals the last couple of days. Scotty, yesterday, spoke to the media. They asked him, you worried about the new contract, new new money coming in, change the name of the stadium. They're loading up to pay Joey Burrow. He owns that city. He owns that state. They are going to have to give it. Literally, he's going to be the governor. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. Uh, I'll bet more on preseason football and, and, and literally than I'll bet on, uh, you know, the regular season as far as sides go. So following market, market capping, uh, literally, uh, l- literally following the media, following your socials. Um, you know, there's so many different things to look at here. If you're not beating things like preseason football, you probably should get a different hobby. It's that simple. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. They went out and they signed DJ Shark, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, to a uh, contract. And Shark was an afterthought in Jacksonville. And maybe it's predominantly because of the offense that they were running last year under Urban Meyer. But Shark basically was in and out of injuries. He had some hand issues. And he only caught 154 receiving yards and two touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today. For those of you on social media, you can follow us on Twitter at SportsGrid and at SportsGrid TV for the latest news, notes, information, picks against the spread, and all kinds of content from us as we get closer and closer, George, to the upcoming season. College football, one week from tomorrow. NFL, less than three weeks away. We're, cl- we're, we're getting there, George. It, it's, it, it feels like we're crawling. But we're getting there, closer and closer. You know, see, it's a little different for me than for you, right? You're in South Florida. It's going to be nice all uh, most of the year long. For me, it's the only bad thing about football, Craig. The only bad thing about football is that, yeah. okay, the cold weather's coming. Cold weather's coming. You know, that's the only depressing thing. It's my birthday in a little bit. It's always always uh, depressing when I was younger too, right? Because not only that, but for my birthday, when I, you know, when you're a kid, oh, great, school starts too. Lovely, all right? Uh, so you know, it's it can never be uh. Full happiness here, but a little, looking forward to it, of course. But I'm a big baseball guy, so I don't probably go, you know, oh, I can't wait for football as much as everybody else. Looking forward to it, but I'm still in baseball mode here, all right? So uh, I'm good. Uh, football can can relax a little bit. Maybe, of course, I'm not all that big on the Cowboys either. They're going to they're gonna break my heart this season again as well. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. But, I mean, listen, having baseball and football together, I think, is, is great. I don't get jazzed up for basketball like I used to, but definitely very excited to have baseball and football going on. No doubt at the same time. All right, it's time for us to wrap up our show today, but let's get started first with some fantasy or reality. (music) 
All right, George, one of the quarterback battles that still remains on, it appears, is going on in Pittsburgh right now, where Kenny Pickett has made a pretty decent impression, I would say, to start. Uh, you know, Seattle has had their troubles. I mean, Geno Smith did not look fantastic last night. I think Drew Locke's door is open again to maybe start there. It seems like Baker Mayfield has won that job in Carolina. So Pittsburgh, I don't know, are there others? It does feel like Pittsburgh, though, is one that still remains up in the air at least a little bit going into the season. Uh, fantasy or reality, George? I'll start with you here, and then we'll take it back to me. Kenny Pickett will win the Steelers' starting job, and my guess is we'll know next week on this. Yeah, now, once again, the way this question is written here, we're always doing the little lawyer thing here. It doesn't say when he'll win it. It doesn't say for week one. It just says he'll win the starting quarterback job. Sure. Eventually, he's going to be the starting quarterback. So, yes, he will win it eventually. It's certainly a reality. Uh, as far as week one, when you're the young quarterback – you know, the, the young quarterback taking the shiny new toy, you're going to play. It's just a matter of when. They don't have Terry Bradshaw there or Ben Roethlisberger on his prime. He's going to play. It's just a matter of when. Do I think it'll be week one? I'm going to say no. I don't think it'll be week one, but it'll be shortly thereafter. I think Pittsburgh knows their defense is good. I don't think it's great, but it's good. Uh, the offense has some issues uh, to worry about, right? Uh You've got a good running game. Your offensive line, maybe not so good. The uh, receivers are good. So I think they know that, but you got a tough division. Regardless of what happens to Sean Watson, you've got a tough division here. So, I mean, Pittsburgh has to realize when is the right time to put him in? You know, is, is he ready? As a rookie quarterback, is he going to be ready to play right from the shoot here? They all up against uh, at Cincinnati, New England week two, at Cleveland week three. I don't think he's going to start the season here. I, you know, they got Buffalo week five, and these are all at, at Buffalo. Tampa Bay week six, not an easy schedule at all. Miami, a good defense. Philadelphia, a good defense. You can make an argument the best part for him would be after the bye week, but then they got New Orleans here. So there's no perfect landing spot as far as the schedule. In my mind, it's just going to be when he's ready or when Mitch Trubisky, if he flops. I don't think Mitch will flop, by the way. I think Mitch is going to get another raw deal here. I think he deserves a chance to start again, but I just think Pickett's going to take over sooner rather than later. Once again, that's not how this question is written, though. So this is certainly a reality. He's going to win the starting job. As for when it's going to be, I don't think it'll be week one, but I think it'll be no. It'll, it'll be before Halloween. Yeah, I, I'm going to say, you know, I, this is a tough one. I'm going to say fantasy. I, I thought Trubisky showed some decent progress at times in Chicago. And based on the way that they virtually eliminated their entire coaching staff, I think the Steelers will do a better job there. And the other thing that I would say about Pittsburgh uh, is the, as I think I, I disagree a little bit, George, I think the winner of the job at the start is going to get a longer leash than you expect. It, does, it feels like that's the way that Pittsburgh does it a little bit. Like injuries happen and then they've had to change quarterbacks, but uh, you know, they, they gave duck Hodges that guy. I remember him. They gave him a long leash to start. Uh, at quarterback and and when when uh, Roethlisberger has been out they've thrown Dennis Dixon in there and they've thrown other quarterbacks in there too to start and I and I think they have like this loyalty thing going on which credit to them they're one of the best run franchises in the NFL so I say Trubisky wins the job and I think he starts the whole year or I think he starts close to the entire year so I say fantasy here I don't think that they made this acquisition for Mitch to sit and I think Pickett is their starter next year or very late unless there is an injury so i say fantasy i say he does not win it all right let's let's talk about this funny scene that happened the other day in milwaukee where the dodgers are taking on the milwaukee brewers and as you know george at the field in milwaukee when anybody hits a home run bernie brewer goes down this very long slide uh and and the dot one of the dodgers broadcasters thought it would be a really good idea to get on the slide and go down it. And he did. And in the end, he ended up breaking his wrist. So we thought it would be funny to ask this question just in terms of our lives this season. And this guy took it like a champ, by the way. Fantasy or reality, you have gotten hurt going down a slide, George. Well, you know, uh, this uh, reminds me of uh, Super 70 Sports on uh, Twitter. Who likes to always post the uh, pictures of a slide back when you and I were younger, Craig. And how there were metal slides, and they'd be in the sun. It would, uh, you know, they, the temperature would be like nine thousand degrees on these things, and you would burn yourself on the way down sitting on this thing. It was hot. That being said, have I ever gotten hurt on a slide? Other than that, I can remember going to a water park once where I hit a seam on the way down, uh, going down slide. I uh, cut up my elbow. I don't know if that would consider it hurt. It was cut, bleeding, but not hurt. 
You know, you, uh, you put some uh, a wrap around it, you're fine. So I never broke a bone. Certainly nothing would stop me from doing anything. So it depends on how you uh, look at the uh, the cut elbow. It was a more than a, I mean, it was a good chunk of my skin taken out, but not a big deal. You know, it didn't really bother you all that much. So have I gotten hurt? Sure. Broken a bone or anything that's going to require a cast so I can't do something? No. So I'm going to say this is a uh, a fantasy for me. I have not gotten anywhere near this kind of an injury. Yeah, I mean, this is this is just crazy that this happened, George. Like, I mean, did you? I don't. Did you see the video of him going down the slide? And, and I'm yeah, sure I saw. It. I did. On viral. I saw. Now. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it didn't even look like it was a wrist injury at the time. It looks like he just like sort of banged up against it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how you're supposed to go down that slide. By the way, is it supposed to be feet first? Like, I, I don't. I don't get it. Like how he just sort of torqued his entire body. But a hilarious scene. And and boy, uh, what what a champ to take that thing and, and have to get a cast on your arm. That's just insane. Uh, I got fantasy here. I've had uh, I've had casts on my leg. I've had casts on my arm when I was a kid, but not on a slide. I think playing baseball a couple of times, I've I've gotten hurt. I but I, I just don't recall a slide, George, being involved in the dynamic. And what's interesting too is that maybe it's pandemic stuff involved. But my daughter, who is going to be 16 next week, I remember taking her to different parks and going down slides. But my son, not as much. Like, I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, we really haven't done that like like we did. But, yeah, we used to go to the park a lot with my, my older daughter. But with my son, it's just more of other stuff, I guess. So, regardless, I got fantasy here. Never injured on a slide, George, sadly to say, here on the show. All right, finally, a, a, funny, a funny story from yesterday that i saw we talk about there's all kinds of competitions these days there's eating competitions there's professional sports there's, there's college sports you can find a competition for anything if you go to one of these crazy channels on television streaming or live well there's a new one george and this one is the mullet championships which is basically given away to the person in the united states that has the best mullet now if you're unfamiliar with a mullet is this is of course your hair with the hair in the back there you go that gives you an idea now i always find it funny when we see people like this in sports i know gardner Minshew is one that we've made fun of in the past that has had this and he's very proud of it mike gundy the head coach at oklahoma state is another but george here's the question fantasy reality you will vote on the united states mullet championship it's the old business in the front right party in the back as i like to say with the uh the mullets here uh, I know, uh, being the hockey guy, and Barry Mel- Melrose was always uh, one Melrose. of those guys who had yes. that, right? Along with other hockey uh, hockey guys. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, near and dear to my heart here, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll be happy to have anything anywhere. Um, so, will I vote on this? Um, you know, it's funny. If it was on my computer and it was there and it was a slow night, sure, I might put in a vote. All right. Am I going to be looking for this? Oh, my God. I got to find out where the voting is. Uh, no. Uh, certainly not. I sometimes I vote for the All Star games and all the, the Pro Bowl in the leagues uh, I watch, but not always. Because once again, if it shows up on my computer, sure I'll put a vote in. If not, I won't. I won't look for it. Same thing here. If I, I don't know what website I would possibly be on, you know, where it would have this. So this is going to be a fantasy for me. But like I said, it, it weird things have happened in my life that I've done things because it's been a slow night. It's a Thursday night. Nothing going on here. You know, it's whatever. And oh, vote this. Oh, look, look at these idiots. Oh yeah, it looks good. Ding, you get a vote. Yeah, you know, sure it could happen, but most more than likely, this is a fantasy. Yeah, I I, I say reality here. I, I think I'll jump on and just click the best mullet. Why not? Um, I mean, it's it's very funny. I think, and and I and I think it's honestly a great idea. We take ourselves way too uh, seriously at times, and sports is taken so seriously at times. Why not have a championship for this and be able to vote on it? But I think the bigger question, probably, George, has to be when you're, you're you're slightly older than me not a lot so you're a kid of the 80s as well just like me more or less so bottom line george in the 80s you're going to i i feel like middle school and then in high school in the 90s probably has gone by then but in the 80s george kurtz had a mullet fantasy or reality graduated high school in 87 so uh there's that uh yes i I did i had him not like this guy but i did have most people did back then for at least some short period of time mine wasn't very long Uh, i started working in banking 
uh, before uh, did this kind of work here. So, uh, you know, once again, that, yeah, that, yeah, that had that look, right? Really no facial hair or anything like that. Still the shorter hair. And then once I started playing hockey, and when I say playing hockey, I played hockey a lot. You know, I'm not waking up early to get my hair done. All right. And that dent from the hockey helmet in your hair was drove, driving me crazy. That's when I started to, you know, buzz the hair, get the military style uh, cut. So, I yes, I did have one, but it was for a very short time, less than a year. Yeah, definitely me in the late 80s and 90s as well. I have some definitely photos, which I would not share here on, on Sports Grid for sure. But uh, needless to say, I think growing up in the 80s and and even late 70s, I think everybody probably, yeah, you're right, George, probably had one as well. All right, that's fantasy or reality for the day. We got the Sports Grid 60 coming up next. I'll be right back here with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for our next edition of Newswire. So make sure you stay on the grid for that. And then don't forget, Scott Farrell coming up at 3 o'clock Eastern. Now, on Monday's edition of the show, as we creep closer to football starting, uh, Davis Maddock will be back with me in the house, and we'll have our fantasy football team preview team previews continuing here as we go right up until the start of the NFL season. In December, we have plenty more teams to cover, so make sure you stay with us for that. And uh, one more reminder, for those of you who have missed any of our team previews, you have a fantasy football draft coming this weekend, just take out your phone, your tablet, whatever, and uh, and click on them over on SportsGrid, our YouTube page. We're previewing every single team this fantasy football season. We previewed the Cowboys yesterday. If you missed it, we did the Packers today. We'll have another one Monday. We'll be right back. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full Buffalo. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and them. Don being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You can take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose, too. Maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game the line. Here at Prime over minus time. 128. We do have to lay up a little bit of wood here, Donnie, but I think against Patrick Corbin. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. Chargers a playoff team in 2022. I, I, our concern, our chief concern right now, no pun intended, is that the Chargers have had a habit of blowing games late. And it continued with the new coaching regime. I do think they are one of the teams that I can pencil in. I wouldn't put them in pen, but I'd pencil them in. The Sports Grid Network. The Bostonian versus the book. The next uh, two Super Bowls for us are going to be ridiculous. Yeah. Like, just ridiculous. So I cannot wait to see what's going to happen in Arizona. Really hope it's not the Patriots. Oh, could you imagine no. that? No. Mac Jones in the Super Stop. Bowl in year two? Oh, Stop man. Stop talking. <laughs> The Bostonian versus the book. Pharrell, coast to coast. Is it that much better than the Phillies? Uh, I mean, I, I would say that probably as a staff, as a whole, the Braves staff is probably not as good as one and two of Philly, but I think from three on down, I do think Atlanta's better. And remember, some of those starting pitchers that are not going to start for the Braves are going to be coming out of the bullpen in a series like that in the wild card. So... The Sports Grid Network. Number 
Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today here on Sports Grid. Hope you have a great weekend. Before you leave us for the day, if that's what you are doing, let's see what's on the mind of George Kurtz. He's been filling in for Davis all week long. This is the final show for him while Davis has been at his uh, honeymoon. And George will cap us off here with the Sports Grid 60. You know, Craig, you mentioned it earlier in the show. All right, uh, as the month of August goes along and into September, more and more people are going to be drafting in their fantasy leagues. Uh, I always wondered why why don't more leagues have IDPs, individual defensive players? We always go with team defenses here. Why do we ignore defensive players? We don't ignore it in baseball. We have pitching. We don't ignore it in hockey. We have goaltending. We don't ignore it in ba- basketball. We count blocks. We count steals. But in football, we ignore it. I just It bothers me to no end here. You should be having individual defensive players start small. One linebacker, one linebacker, uh, one lineman, one secondary player, a safety, whatever it might be here. Just start small. Everybody loves a stud, and you grow from there. And so it just it bothers me to no end that we just ignore defense. We all have a team defense. We, and what, do we, what do we always say about team defense? Just draft at the last round. They don't matter. If you had defensive players, they would matter. All right, I want to close it out here with a story we'll be talking more about at 2 o'clock Eastern on Newswire, which is the World Baseball Classic, which is coming in 2023 in March of next year, has just named their manager to Team USA, and that is going to be former Atlanta Braves, Chicago Cubs infielder, and now working for MLB Network. That is Mark DeRosa. Uh, DeRosa, of course, uh, has been rumored to be a manager in many different spots, and maybe this is just the beginning of what could potentially be a future managing gig. At the very least, we know he'll be managing Team USA when the World Baseball Classic kicks off in March of 2023. That'll do it for our show today and our week of shows. Thanks, of course, to LTN and our graphics department, no question. Also, thanks to our producer, Brett Levy, and for my co-host all week long, George Kurtz. George, hope you have a great weekend. I'm Craig Mish. I'll be back with you at 2 o'clock Eastern for Newswire. Great, great.